So now, also, if you check there, you are given uh, an example on how to answer this section in a perfect manner. Okay, right. So now, let's start the work now. 1.1.1. It reads as follows. Which of the following is a real flow in the product market? So now, remember, grade 12, before you can actually uh, jump on to answers, you should always make sure that you understand the key concepts given in a, in a question. Also, you must check the action verbs that have been used in that particular question. So now, if we check this um, question, we have real flow as well as the uh, product market. Okay, so now, if you still remember the real flow and the product market, if you, you draw a bigger picture, these uh, concepts, they fall under the circular flow model. What is this circular flow model? Then we shall discuss that um, as time lapses. So now, let's check the real flow. And also, let's check the product market. When we talk of a word market, a word market is a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. Why are we saying that a word market is a platform? Because uh, transactions can either be performed physically or electronically. So now, that is why we're actually saying that um, a market is a platform. Okay, right. So now, let's check uh, the product market. We have different set of uh, market or different types of market. If time allows, I'll actually go through them. But for now, since we don't have um, enough time, let's quickly uh, focus on the, on the type of the market that we're actually faced uh, with. We have product market. So product market is a platform where buying and selling of goods and services uh, do take place. That is the product market. Here we check the goods and services that are actually uh, being bought and, and sold. So now, so in a, in a, when we talk of the, the real flow, we have two types of flows. We have money flow as well as the, the real flow. So now under real flow, we check uh, the flow of goods and services. We check the flow of goods and services as well as the flow of vectors of production. While under, uh, under um, money flow, we check uh, the flow of expenditures or expenses as well as uh, the flow of um, income. Okay, right. So now, grade 12, in order for you to master this um, a kind of questions, you should always make sure that you uh, apply uh, the method or the strategy that is best. And of all the strategies up to this far, that I think I can work best for you, grade 12, so as to attain or achieve the higher mark is uh, when you apply the strategy that we call elimination method. Okay, right. So now this elimination method, what do we, we do? You normally compare compare the options given. And then the ones that you see that they are far from being correct, you cancel them out up until you are actually left with the one that you think uh, is uh, mostly correct. Okay, right. So now let's check option A. Option A, uh, we have the spending flow on goods and services from households to firms. It's out. So we cancel it, it's out. So now the second one, which is B, we have the flow of the vectors of production from household to firms. And then also this one is uh, totally out. So now let's check um, the next one, which is uh, uh, C, option C. Then it reads as follows. The income flow from firms to household through the vector market. Also this one uh, is out. So now it means that automatically we are now left with what? We've left with D. And that makes D our answer. The best answer is the flow of goods and services from firms to households. Remember, I said that in order for you to master this, you should understand the concept. So now, since the product market is the market uh, where, or is the platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. So in this regard, this calls for uh, D as the correct option uh, compared to other options. So now, great terms, bear in mind that most of these answers, they are pretty uh, close to one another. That is why you should always uh, take into account uh, the best strategy that you can actually apply so as to um, get to the correct answer. Okay, right, great terms. So now we are actually saying that the perfect answer in this regard is... Um, the perfect answer in this regard, we are saying that our perfect answer is um, D.
what you point out. So now we said that our appropriate answer is going to be uh, D. Okay, right. So now moving on to the uh, next question, which is 1.1.2. It reads um, as follows. The dash is caused by changes in the building and construction industry. So now, if you check um, the, the, the key concept in this uh, question, we have uh, what we have construction industry. And what is this industry? Industry here, we refer to a group of firms that sell the same product or group of firms that sell the same goods as well as um, services. So now if we check here, we have um, different set of what? Uh, different set of or different types of business cycles. So now um, you should always understand the meaning of uh, that business cycles. And before, uh, before you can actually jump onto answers as well, you should always make sure that um, you know uh, the concept uh, when uh, you read uh, the question. Okay, right. So now uh, the appropriate answer for this one we have um, C. C is our appropriate answer. Guys, remember uh, the types of business cycles, they normally depend on the uh, number of years that um, the, the business or, or the, or the economic activities normally fluctuate. So now let me take you to these business cycles. What do we mean by word or a phrase business cycles? Business cycles, we refer to fluctuations of the economic activities. So now these economic activities, uh, we check uh, how long can they actually uh, fluctuate. So now in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be C. Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question that we have in hand, we have 1.1.3. 1. Uh, 1. Um, uh, so now 1.1.3 1. 1. Uh, reads as follows. The South African Reserve Bank uses DASH as an instrument to maintain uh, price stability. So it means that now the moment you are talking of the of our South African Reserve Bank, you should take into account um, that um, South African Bank it uses uh, which policy and under which policy, which instrument best uh, works for, uh, for 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 South African Reserve Bank so as to stimulate the flow of goods and and services. Guys, remember if you take into account most of the policies they are needed uh, because um, they there will be a fluctuations of the. Uh, economic um, activities. So now once there are fluctuations of the economic activities, it's either the government uh, can come into play to stimulate using the policy that is we call fiscal policy and the instruments that they normally use there, they use taxation as well as the government spending. But now when it comes to South African Reserve Bank, we know that this is uh, a reserve bank and reserve bank normally uh, it uses um, uh, the policy that we call monetary policy and this monetary policy uses a um, uh, different set of instruments and the instruments that uh, they normally use, they use money supply as well as the um, interest rate. So now remember, it will depend uh, whether the economy has landed at uh, growth or it has landed at boom. So now uh, that is why now they will check uh, which uh, instrument uh, should be uh, what uh, much lessened and which instrument should actually uh, uh, be uh, mostly applied. Okay, right. So now, as I said earlier, that you should always make sure that uh, uh, you want to use the elimination method whenever you are answering the questions under business studies. So now, if we check um, the given set of options, A is out, B is correct, C is out, D is out. So now, our appropriate answer in this regard is going to be um, option B. Okay, right, great 12. So now, let's move on to the next option. Or the next question. The next question we have 1.1.4. 1.1.4 reads as follows. Our reserve assets are recorded in the dash. So now let's talk of the word assets and let's talk of uh, the word reserve. So now reserve, it means that you actually put aside, you don't actually use that assets at a moment. So now what do we mean by the assets? When you talk of the assets, we refer to possessions of the economy or positions of the uh, business. So now remember these assets, they can either be the assets of a long term as well as the assets of a short term. So now the assets of a long term in this regard, it can actually involve um, machinery, it can involve fitting and um, machinery as well, and as well as um, the buildings, uh, the motor vehicles, and the likes. So now when it comes to the current ones, meaning the current ones are they are the assets that can be possessed 
or that can be owned within uh, a short period of time. So now these assets that we call them current, it means that we can actually say that uh, debtors, we call them what we call them um, in the current assets. Because when you ref we refer to debtors, we refer to those are people who normally uh, owe the business, even though they owe us. They haven't paid the business. That money belongs to the business. They can pay that money within any 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 short uh, period of time. So now, um, uh, great talks. Remember when we talk of um, uh, uh, what when you talk of the recording, we record. What do we record actually? We record the transactions. So now these transactions, uh, we check the transactions that are international, meaning we check um, uh, the flow of goods and services uh, between the countries. Which is a what? Which is a, which can actually be uh, classified as a bilateral trade. So now also we can actually record the transactions that take place amongst different set of uh, countries. And in that regard, that particular type type of trade we call it multilateral trade. Okay, right. So now the recording here of the reserve assets um, they can actually be recorded under financial account. Yes. And then we check B current account. No. Then we check C, capital transfer account, no. Then we check D, gold account, no. So now it means that this one of um, financial account is the one that is um, appropriate. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to 1.1.5. 1.1.5 reads as follows. The value of goods and services produced by a country during a financial year. During a financial year is known as dash um, income. So now if we check... If we check uh, the, the options given, member Kritovs, I always tell you that uh, you should always apply uh, elimination method or elimination strategy uh, whenever you are dealing with um, uh, the questions uh, that are uh, in a multiple choice form. Okay, right. So now if we check here, domestic income, domestic income uh, uh, is totally out, money income is totally out, but the correct option is um, national income because also the government uh, is uh, totally out. So, great talks. Remember, I told you that these um, uh, options given in most cases they are pretty uh, similar or pretty close to one another. And you should always make sure that you are careful whenever uh, you attempt them. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, the next question. And this next question we have um, one point one point six. So now one point one point six reads as follows. Which of the following is the responsibility of the local government? So now, local government. What do we mean by local government? And why, why in actually do we have local government? It means if you have local government, we still have other types of the, of the government. And what do we mean by a word, government? When you talk of the government, we normally refer to bodies uh, that uh, uh, provide uh, the economy with public um, goods. Remember, public goods, in most cases, they don't have a price. They are free. They are free goods. In most cases, they are free goods, um, unlike um, economic goods, where they normally have a price on them. So now, let's check a different classification of the government. We have um, national government. National government is, is where now we refer to those uh, guys in the parliament. And also, we have uh, the provincial government. Provincial government is where now we can uh, refer to MECs. And also, uh, lastly, we have the local government. This one of local government takes into account the municipalities. Okay, right. So now, great jobs. Let's check uh, the options given. The first option given, we have street life. That one is the correct one. Then we have education. Education is far. And then we have army. Army is far. Then we, can, we have car license. Car license is far. So it means that now, in this regard, our correct answer it is um, going to be A. Okay. Now, moving on to uh, the next question, which is 1.1.7. 1.1.7 um, reads as follows. An increase in taxes will cause a decrease in debt. What do we mean by a tax? When we talk of a tax, we talk of a levy or a charge that uh, the government normally apply on uh, uh, individual income or on business um income or uh, they normally uh, charge or is a levy on um, the investment uh, that um, actually into into place okay right so now 
And let's check um, the options are uh, given. Okay, remember before we can actually go to the options given, this uh, text, we have different classification of text. So now this text, uh, if we have uh, what we have income tax. Income tax is the levy on what on uh, individual income and also individual income. And we also have what we also have um, company tax. And this company tax, it is actually a levy on business uh, profits. Okay, right. So now also we should be in, in position to know the, 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 the type of tax that is actually being applicable or used here in South Africa. Here in South Africa, the type of tax that they use, they use what do you call progressive tax? So now this progressive tax, um, uh, it, it says what? Uh, it says the more you yen, the more you are taxed, or the lesser you yen, uh, the lesser you are taxed. So now remember, the major essence of the government to apply tax, because from the start, I say that the government, in order for them to stimulate the flow of goods and services, they apply what you call a fiscal policy. And this fiscal policy, uh, it contains two instruments. One is what? One is taxes or taxation, and the other one is government um, uh, spending. So now, uh, these taxes, the government apply them whenever they want to stimulate uh, the flow of goods and, and services. So now, right, great tops. So now, if we check them, they are saying that an increase in taxes will cause a decrease in this tax collection is out. Consumption, yes. Consumption, yes. It is correct. So now see government revenues out and governmental expenditures out. Why are we saying that an increase in taxes will cause a decrease in consumption? It is because the moment the government uh, increases uh, the percentage of the tax on the, what, on the individual income, that is going to discourage the, the, what, the production of goods and services, meaning uh, these individuals, they are going to be discouraged to undertake work or to render services. Why? Because now they will actually be what? Sweating for, for nothing. They will sweat too much. After sweating too much, much of their monies or much of their income now is going to be taken by the government. But it is the good word. It is the good strategy for the government to do that. But it is not advisable for the government always to, uh, to put uh, too much levy on what? On uh, individual, individual income. So let's check why is it so important for the government always to charge uh, this tax. It is so important because tax normally, it helps to, uh, to redistribute income from those who have a lot of uh, uh, wealth or, or, or money uh, towards um, those who are, who are poor, or those who don't have. So in this regard, it means that the government will tax those people who are having a lot of money or a lot of assets or those people who are wealthy, and then they are going to give to, uh, to the poor. How do they give to the poor? In most cases, they give to the poor uh, via what? Via uh, capital transfer. Uh, so now this one of uh, capital transfer uh, or social grants. Here we refer to social grants because remember, whenever we talk of a grant, a grant is the money that you receive without any 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 job being done or any service actually being rendered. Okay, right. So now, as we said, great talks. The appropriate answer for this section is going to be is going to be a B. Okay. Yes, I would love to go deeper or go more under this concept, but for the sake of time, great talks, um, we shall discuss it as time lapses. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next question, we have 1.1.8. So now 1.1.8 grade 12 reads as follows. Changes in, in terms of trade signal changes in the countries. So now let's check the terms of trade. What is this terms of trade? Terms of trade normally calls for what you call international trade. It means that here there is a flow or there are flows of goods and services between, uh, between countries or amongst uh, the countries. So now if we check here, we have A, which is prices, is out. We have inflation, is out. We have wealth, is out. But we have welfare. So in this regard, welfare, it is our appropriate answer for this um, question. Okay, right, great tops. So now let's move on to the next question, great tops. The next question that we are moving to, we are moving to 1.2. Uh, so now 1.2 reads as follows. Choose a description from column B that matches the item in column A. Write only a letter uh, in brackets. Actually give an example how you can best uh, approach this uh, particular type of questions. So now great tops, if you check this type of questions, they are somehow very tricky, even though they might look... Uh, easy into your eyes, but in actual fact, they are not that much um, easy. 
Okay, right. So now um, let's check um, uh, the concept under column A. Column A, in most cases, you are given the concept. Uh, while in column B, in most cases, you can be given the features, the characteristics, or, or the definitions, or the explanations, and um, the likes. So it means that you should be in the position to understand the concept deeply, because the moment you don't understand the concept deeply, in that regard, it is going to what? It is going to show you flames. Okay, right. So now let's check 1.2.1. Uh, so we have Keynesian approach. So now, who is this Keynesian? This, this Keynesian, Keynesian is the name of a person. And why are we saying the approach? It means it is his understanding towards um, the economics because uh, Kratos, uh, we have different set of um, theories under economics. It means that um, um, we have different uh, views when we, 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 we deal with economics. That is why our founder of economics, uh, our father, which is Adam Smith, um, this father uh, for us, him as well, uh, he does um, uh, tolerate what tolerate different set of approaches. Remember, Keynesian did approach uh, or did um, give out his side of um, view or the story when it comes to the fluctuations of economic um, activities. So he is saying that if you want to avoid the fluctuations of economic activities, the market forces of demand and supply will make the economy to stabilize. We don't need the government. We don't need the government. And according to his approach, he's saying that in most cases, governments have the same what? Have the same same name, which is corruption. So that is why he's saying that, no. Whether uh, the economy is at boom or the economy is at draws, meaning when the economy is at boom, it means that economic activities are doing very, very well. There is full employment. Many of the resources are being used. There's no, uh, what, there's no waste of resources, meaning there is efficiency or resources actually are being used um, efficiently. So now this guy, Keynesian, is saying that, no, we don't need government to step in when it comes to uh, the flow of goods and services or when it comes to uh, the performance of the economic activities. So now, um, if we check uh, the appropriate answer for this that is in line with um, uh, Mr. Keynesian's approach is E. That says, a school of thought which believes the economy is best controlled by market forces. Which market forces? These market forces that we are referring to, we are referring to uh, the level of demand and supply. What is demand and what is supply? When you talk of demand, we talk of the willingness and ability to buy goods and services. Then uh, when it comes to supply, supply we refer to what? We refer to um, the ability and willingness of businesses to sell goods and services. So meaning our appropriate answer in this regard, it is going to be A, meaning E here is our appropriate answer. Okay, right. <clears throat> so now guys, uh, let's check um, our, our 1.2.2, the amplitude. So now what, what do we mean by, by, by this um, amplitude? When we talk of the amplitude, remember the amplitude, it does uh, measure what? It does measure the distance uh, from drop to drop and peak to peak. So now uh, we must check um, the appropriate answer uh, that uh, is in line with, with that. This is just a measure. It is a measure. It's a tool that uh, is actually being applied whenever they measure the flow of goods and services or whenever they measure, uh, they measure actually um, the performance of the economic activities. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be D. It measures the severity of the uh, cyclical uh, fluctuations. So in this regard, it means that our appropriate answer is going to be, our appropriate answer is going to be um, D. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next question, we have boom. What is this boom? Boom is a turning point of the business cycle. And this turning point of the business cycle, it does indicate that economic activities are performing very well. They are, there is no wastage of resources. Resources are efficiently being utilized or resources are efficiently have been actually uh, used. So now this, it means that in that particular economy, if um, the economy, economic activities are at boom, that is the indication that there is full employment, full employment of resources. 
People are working. Businesses are making profit. The government is able uh, to collect enough tax. And then people also, they are able to buy goods and services because the purchasing power is allowing them to, what, to buy whatsoever they desire with um, the money that they actually earn. So now the economic activities, they are not limited to what I actually mentioned. But for the sake of time, um, let me actually um, move on. So now our appropriate answer in this regard, we have, um, we have C. So the C uh, that says uh, a period of a rapid economic expansion, we have, um, we have um, C. So meaning here, our appropriate answer is going to be C. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have what? We have um, pressure bill, treasury, treasury uh, bills. So now what are these uh, treasury bills? Treasury bills, uh, normally, we refer to what we refer to uh, short term uh, debt obligations that are normally inconsistent with um, the central government or the national government. So, meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer, if we check there, it is what it is um, A. Meaning A in this regard is our appropriate answer. Okay, great talk. Thanks. So, now let's move on to uh, the next one, the next question. So, now we have balance of uh, trade. So, now the balance of trade here. What do we mean uh, by this um, uh, balance uh, of trade? So now, the balance of trade that we are referring to, we check the, the difference in value between a country's imports and exports of goods and services. Meaning this balance of trade, it does what? It does uh, record the transaction uh, pertaining to imports as well as exports. What do we mean by imports and what do we mean by exports? When we talk of the imports, we refer to goods and services that have been bought from other countries by local firms or local businesses or our local government. Then when it comes to the exports, exports, we refer to goods and services that are locally produced and they're actually being sold to the rest of the, of the world. So now in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be, is going to be H. Okay, right, great talks. Thank you very much uh, for understanding and listening uh, and taking me up to this far. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 1.2.6. 1.2.6 reads as follows. Current prices. What are these um, uh, current prices? So now when we talk of the current prices, in most cases, we check the actual values of goods and, um, and services. We check the current. What is this current? That's what we check. We check the actual one, the actual values of goods and um, uh, services. So now let's check the appropriate answer for this. So now if we lay our eyes on, on that uh, column B, we have what? We have F as our appropriate answer. So meaning in this regard, F is our appropriate answer. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, 1.2.7. 1.2.7 uh, says non-extrudability. So non-extrudability, this concept calls for what we call a public good. Remember, a public good, we said that a public good is a free good that can be used by anyone. And this public good that can be consumed by anyone. You can't, you can't exclude someone from using it. You can't stop someone from using it. That is why we are saying that there are non-excludability. Everyone can use the public good. Everyone can utilize a public good, whether you are a foreigner or you are a citizen. If there are parks there, you can't say that in this park, foreigners shouldn't come and sit in this park. No. Why? Because it's a public good. It's a free good that can be utilized by everyone. Now also let's check the tar roads. Tar roads also is a public good. So you can't say that the, the motor vehicle for foreigners shouldn't use a certain tar road. No. You can't exclude them. So also we can talk of the street lights. You can't say that uh, since you're a foreigner, when well, I shouldn't use these street lights. No, you can't exclude them. And we have different set of what examples under uh, this public good. And then uh, you can't exclude uh, someone uh, from using or utilizing such um, uh, such uh, commodities. Why? Because they are public ones. They are free. They don't have a price, just like economic um, goods. So now in this regard, our um, Appropriate answer, if you check our appropriate answer, our appropriate answer is I. I, it is almost impossible to prohibit any person from using the gold. So meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be, is going to be I. 
Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have 1.2.8 that um, addresses the issue of globalization. What do you mean by globalization? Globalization is a linkage of what? It's a linkage of different set of countries uh, coming together to perform a certain activity. And make an example of this. Uh, different set of uh, countries can come together to, uh, to celebrate uh, World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day, then the moment they come together, then uh, that activity, we call it what? We call it um, globalization. Also, if they come to play Olympic Games, uh, then also in that regard, we call it globalization. And also, if uh, we have our Soccer World Cup, also Soccer World Cup can be classified as an activity that calls for globalization. So now let's check um, the appropriate answer for our 1.2.8. Our appropriate answer is G. That is as follows, increasing uh, integration of economies around the world. So meaning here, in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be uh, G. Okay, right, great talks. So now we are done with this uh, question. Let's move on to uh, the next question. So now the next question, uh, we, we are moving on to 1.3. Um, 1.3 of all questions, it is somehow very tricky. How, why are we saying 1.3 somehow it is very tricky? It is very tricky because it needs you to understand the content of economics. It needs you to have uh, the content of economics. If you are used, you are used to memorizing concepts, when it comes to this question, it is not easy to master all of, all of them uh, if uh, you are not well equipped um, with um, uh, the concepts. Okay, right. So now um, let's check... Um, the question, give one term for each of the following descriptions. Write only the term next to the question number. Uh, an example is given there. So uh, we have 1.3.1 to 1.3.6 in the answer book. So abbreviations, agronomies, and examples will not be accepted. So it means that what they are saying, uh, you shouldn't write GDP. GDP, if you write GDP, uh, I put a cross. I don't even uh, put a half. I put a cross. Why a cross? Because uh, it is specified amongst a set of instructions that um, you shouldn't um, uh, write abbreviations, but you rather say cross domestic um, uh, product. Okay, right. Great talk. So now let's move on to 1.3.1. 1.3.1 reads as follows. A reporting tool prescribed by the United Nations uh, for countries to compile cross domestic product figures. Uh, this calls for systems of uh, national accounts. Systems, systems of national account. Systems of national account. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 1.3.2. 1.3.2 reads as follows. The type of business cycle where nominal GDP is adjusted for inflation. So now, if nominal GDP it is adjusted for inflation, nominal we check the current one. So the moment uh, inflation is being adjusted, it means that calls for the real what? The real GDP. So meaning in this regard, we are going to have a real, real business cycles. Real business cycle. Okay, right. So now, great terms. Let's move on to the next question. It's 1.3.3. 1.3.3 reads as follows. Payments by the government to suppliers that reuse their cost. Payments by the government to suppliers that reduce their costs. Mm, reduce their costs. Yes. So it means that this payment also, it should benefit uh, consumers, it should benefit those who buy goods and services. And uh, if we call, if we check into account, uh, uh, the, the business should always make sure that they minimize what they minimize the cost. And then the government can also chip in to say that, okay, guys, uh, since um, you are supposed to spend this much, but on behalf of consumers, let us pay this amount. So it means that this question calls for what you call a subsidy. What is a subsidy? A subsidy is a set of amount that the government pays to producers or suppliers or sellers of goods and services on behalf of the customers. So meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be subsidies. Okay, right. I already explained uh, 
uh, what is um, the subsidies? Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question, we have 1.3.4. 1.3.4 reads as follow. The ability of the country to produce greater quantity of um, a good or service with the same quantity of inputs um, per unit of um, uh, time. So now remember, we have a different set of uh, what? Uh, uh, we have absolute advantage, comparative. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be absolute advantage. Absorb, load, advantage. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question says, uh, state-owned enterprises that um, uh, provide public goods and services. In most cases, state-owned, yeah, we refer to what? We refer to those um, uh, businesses where the government has some shares in them, where the government has some part of our uh, ownership in them. And in, in economic terms, such a businesses, we call them parastatals. Call them 